Okay, I'm Simon Revel. I'm a UK-based guitar teacher. I've been teaching for the last three years and I've been teaching a lot of beginners and I'm hoping that's you. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at some chord diagrams. So this image that you can see here now is a blank guitar chord box. Okay, and the reason why I'm going to go through that is because there's some things in this diagram that a lot of people miss. So here we are with our blank neck with the thick black line um, denoting the nut of the guitar. And now we've got the C for the C major chord. This is the name of the chord we're going to be do you're looking at. And the next thing we're going to do is add some dots. There we go. We've got three dots. That tells us where to put our fingers. Again, I know a lot of you beginners will know what this means, but we're just going to go through this for the sake of clarity for everyone else who might not. Okay, so with this, a lot of people can think, well, I know how to play the chord now, and I can work it out. But there's some more information we need. So here we've got an X. This is telling us that we don't want to play this string. And then we've got an O, which means open string. So that string is going to be played regardless of the fact that no finger is on it. So the picking hand is going to play that. And this string here, the high E string, it's also got an O over it. So we're going to use that uh, in the same way. Carrying on, just had another number underneath this string, which means we're going to use our third finger to play that one. And there we go, the second finger we're going to use to play that other dot. And finally, for the last dot, we're going to use the first finger. Okay, now a lot, a lot of this is great. This tells us exactly what to do with the chord. Okay, but this is the thing I really want you to understand is that people just think it's easy as that. Well, I put my, you know, fingers in the same places as the block uh, of the chord diagram and then it's going to work, right? So that's fine. But important thing is how we change chords and how we do it. If you learn how to play a chord by following that diagram, you know, and going, oh, you know, this finger goes there, and that finger goes there, and then this finger goes here, you know, and then, well, it works. Let's try and put that into a song. Oh, it was that one there, wasn't it? And then that one, and that one. It's not going to work. You're not going to be able to play it in time. So we need an organized method of building chords from the ground up every time. What we do is we always play chords from left to right. So the first thing we look go back to the diagram. The first thing we look at is the X. So we're not going to play that string. So we can forget about that string. Then we're going to look at the A string. We're going to need our third finger for that one. Okay. And then we need our second finger. And then finally need my first finger. I'm going to show you now how we're going to build that. I'm going to put my thumb behind the neck. I'm going to put my third finger there for this one on the A string at the third fret. Then I'm going to use my second finger to put uh, down at the D string on the second fret and then I'm going to put my first finger down on the B string at the first fret and let's give that a, a strum. Okay so that sounds great and we should use this every time we learn a new chord because I can go really quickly between my chords like so is because I've practiced this method and it means I can change whenever I want, halfway through a beat, at the end of a beat, it doesn't matter when. I'm always going to be able to change chords in a smooth way because I practice this. And this is what I'm trying to show you. It's not all of it. We're going to talk about some chord connections and things in a minute. But this is the fundamental thing I want you to understand. So next thing we're going to look at is the A minor chord. So here's the full diagram for the A minor chord. And as you can see, we still don't need the E string. And we're going to build it from left to right. So it says, if you look at the numbers, it says 2, 3, and then 1. So if I get my fingers out, 2, 3, and 1. And let's try and build that chord now. So finger 2 on the D string at the 2nd fret. Finger 3 on the G string at the 2nd fret. And finally, finger 1 on the B string at the 1st fret. OK, we've built the chord now. Let's give it a go. It was 5 strings, if you remember. OK, and that sounds great. So let's have a recap over those two chords. So we had 3, 2, 1 for C. 3, 2, 1. And now for A minor, we had 2, 3, 1. So here we go. 2, 3, 1. And that sounds fine. All right, so we've learned how to build the chords individually. OK, we'll get on to changing through them in the minute. Let's have a look at two more chords I want to look at this week. So here we have E minor. This is pretty straightforward. I'm going to rush through this a little bit to save a bit of time. You can always look at this if you pause the video. So we've got fingers one and two on the second fret. And the rest of the strings are open. So here we go. 
one and two down on the A and the D strings. Give that a strum. It's six strings, you might have noticed now. And that's great. Now we're going to have a look at the G chord. Okay, so this fingering is two, one, three. So here I go. Two, one, three. And that sounds fine. And again, if you want to rewind that to look at that again, that's fine. Please do that. Don't just feel you have to keep watching me. You know, have a look at those things and try those chords out for yourself. What might be a good idea to do now is pause the video and perhaps recap. So we've got C, which is three, two, one. Three, two, one. We've got A minor, which is two, three, one. Finger two, finger three, finger one. We've got E minor, which is one, two. One, two. And finally, we've got G, which is two, one, three. Two, one, three. Excellent. So after a while of practicing that, you should be able to do this. Okay, that's great. So have a good practice at that and then come back. So what I'm going to do now is show you another diagram, which is slightly different. We're going to be looking at this one. It's the C and the A minor chord. And if you notice, we've got exactly the same diagrams we looked at before, but they're just sitting next to each other. I've done this for a reason. Okay, because when I show you this next diagram, you notice it's got some red dots on it. Okay, and what these red dots mean are the fingers that have to stay down on the C chord as we move to A minor. Now some of you are going to look at that and that's going to make instant sense and some of you are going to look at that and think what the hell is he talking about? Well, 